Okay, Gurudev. We have uh, 13 devotees Okay. Now. Okay. Om Jnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchaka Upatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <clears throat> So we were uh, going through the pastime of Lord Krishna on Krishna book we're on volume 2 we were speaking about volume 2 of Ch of Krishna, oh, chapter 2 rather of Krishna book uh, yes. and we were speaking about chapter 2 means the birth of Lord Krishna we're going to speak about today So we were hearing about how Kamsa was very worried about the eighth child of Devaki who was going to kill him. So he put Devaki and Vasudeva in jail. And he became, he made himself the ruler of the kingdom. And when Devaki had given birth to children, one after another, she gave birth to six sons, and one after another, Kamsa killed them. And sometimes people would come to Kamsa and try to appeal to him and try to uh, encourage him to stop this and to not to do such terrible things. But Kamsa was so powerful that they would, when they met Kamsa, they would end up worshipping Kamsa. So Kamsa made a uh, he made alliances and it, no, he he arranged to get the support from all the other different demons who were ruling kingdoms nearby. They became his friends and they were all his supporters. Uh, 
กล้าดีกับคําสั่งเลยนะคะทุกคนก็จะเป็นมิตรบางคนก็จะเออส่วนใหญ่ก็จะยอมเขาไปแล้วก็จะเป็นมิตรกับเขา And Kamsa himself had married the daughters of Jarasandha, and Jarasandha was a very powerful king. So, because he'd married the daughters of Jarasandha, Jarasandha was also a supporter of Kamsa. Oh, so, you know, there are two kinds of people. There's the devotees and the demons. So all the demons, all the demons, they were all the supporters of Kamsa. And those who were devotees, they had to be very careful. Many went into hiding. Many of them went to hide in the forest, or they went to caves in the mountains. But some of them stayed. Some of them, like Akrura, he stayed because they knew that very soon the Lord is going to come, and they wanted to see the Lord's pastimes. So then Devaki became pregnant for the seventh time. So she was very happy naturally because she had a child in her womb, but she was also feeling very sorry as well. Because all the other children had been killed by Kamsa, so she thought this child would also be killed by Kamsa. So this seventh child was no ordinary child. This seventh child was actually Ananta, who is, you know, the expansion of Lord Krishna. So at the time, Devaki was pregnant. That this time the Lord ordered His potency called Yoga Maya to appear to take to go there. So. Yoga Maya is the chief of all of Krishna's different potencies. Krishna has many potencies. Yoga Maya is the chief of all his potencies. So he told Yoga Maya that she should appear in Vrindavan. And she, she, she told her how in Vrindavan, uh, Rohini is there, and Rohini is one of the wives of Vasudev. And so Rohini. She was one of the wives of Vasudev, and she was staying in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. M Vasudev had sent her there for her safety to protect her in case Kamsa would also put her in prison. 
แล้วก็โรฮิมีโรฮิมีนะคะได้ไดความจริงเนี่ยท่านได้ส่งไปหาโรฮิมีเพื่อให้ช่วยดูแลปกป้องนะคะเพื่อไม่ให้คำสั่งเนี่ยไปทำร้ายนางได้เพราะว่าโรฮิมีเป็นหนึ่งในภรรยาของวาสุเดฟเหมือนกัน So the Lord, first of all, he's telling Yoga Maya what he wants her to do. He said, "I want you, I want you to enter in first before you go to Vrindavan. I want you to first of all enter into the womb of. Uh, well, uh, not that she has to enter, but he, he said, 'I want you to arrange for the child which is in the womb of Devaki.'" I want you to transfer that child from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. No, no. Krishna is telling Yoga Maya. He said, "I want you to arrange to to transfer the child." From the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. Okay, Yeah, actually, this child who appears—it's the seventh child. We said, Ananta. Ananta Shesha, he is like the serpent, the celestial serpent, which is the bed for the Supreme Lord. So he appears first of all in the womb of Devaki. And he gets everything ready for Krishna, so that Krishna can come there. Krishna comes as the eighth child. <laughs> who, who is this? Uh, already mute, g u r m a s h Ah? He is from Pattaya, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can mute them. Yeah. Hey, sorry, sorry, g u r m a s h Hare Krishna, sorry, but you are a c o n d please. Okay, so the first six children had been killed by Kamsa, and then Ananta Shesha takes birth in the womb of Devaki, and he makes okay. makes arrangements for Krishna to come there. Just like before the king comes, first of all, the minister of the king comes, and he makes sure everything is arranged nicely for the king. So Ananta Shesha comes first into the womb of Devaki, the seventh child. But then Yoga Maya transfers Ananta Shesha from that womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. Rohini, we said he, she's also one of Vasudev's wives, but she's in the home of Nanda and Yashoda. Rohini, นะคะเป็นหนึ่งในภรรยาของวาสุเดฟ
ต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยอยู่ในบ้านของนันดานันดามาราแล้วก็ยโสดคุณแม่ยโสด So the the Lord tells Yoga Maya that she, he tells her, "I'm going to go into the womb of Devaki. I will appear in the womb of Devaki." And he tells Yoga Maya, "You should." Appear as the daughter of Nanda and Yashoda. Right. So you see, some people they worship Krishna, and other people worship Yoga Maya. Some people worship the Bhagwan, the, the 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 source of the energy, and other people they worship worship the energy. They are called shaktas. They don't worship the supreme Lord. They worship the energy, the the shakta. <laughs> So people who want material blessings, they will worship Yoga Maya or Durga. But people who want to get spiritual perfection, they will worship Lord Krishna. So there's these two kinds of people. The, there's the devotees, the Vaishnavas, and there's the shaktas, those who worship the energy of Krishna. So there are many temples for Vishnu. There are also many temples for Devi, for Devi Maya, right? Yoga Maya or the Devi. So the Lord tells Yoga Maya how. You have to attract Ananta Shesha from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. And the Lord, the Lord tells Yoga Maya, this this Ananta Shesha, he will be known as he's not different from Sankarshan. The source of all spiritual power. And he's also known as Balarama. I mean, Bala because he's very, he's got spiritual strength. And Rama, because he makes everyone gives everyone the highest happiness. If we want to be successful in. Self-realization. We need to get the blessing of Balaram. And we get this strength from Balaram, 
Balaram is not different from Nityananda Prabhu. And the spiritual master is the representative of Lord Nityananda. We get, we get spiritual strength by following the orders of the spiritual master. So, Yoga Maya had this difficult task, very difficult, not easy, to transfer the child from Devaki's womb to Rohini's womb. But, but she did it. So when this happened, when the, the child left the womb of Devaki, everyone thought Devaki's seventh child had, that had been a miscarriage. So they were all feeling sorry, even Kamsa was feeling sorry, they were feeling compassionate, oh what a shame, she had a miscarriage, something went wrong, she couldn't deliver the child. So after, after the Ananta Shesha leaves the womb of Devaki, you know, he's, he's made an arrangements for Lord Krishna. He put a nice bed there because he knows Lord Krishna is going to come there. So he has to make it nice and pure. It's already pure, but he makes it nice and comfortable for Lord Krishna. So then we should understand how Krishna takes birth, how Krishna appears there. That first of all, he appears in the heart of Vasudev. And then from the heart of Vasudev, he transfers to the heart of Devaki. Mm -hmm. So because, because the Lord has inconceivable powers, he can appear, he can take his birth any way he likes. So he did not take birth by semen, by discharge, by the man semen entering the womb of the woman. So it, it was just by the Lord's inconceivable power that he transfers from the heart of Vasudev into the heart of Devaki. And so in this way you can see the heart of the devotee is also a dam, it means the holy place where the Lord resides. So when Lord Krishna appears, he, he comes 
but it's understood that all the different, all of his different expansions and incarnations, they're all within him. The Lord, because He's the Supreme Lord, so He comes along with all of His different potencies, everything, all the incarnations and different expansions, they're all contained within the Supreme Lord's form. So when the Lord appeared within the womb of Devaki, then she looked very beautiful. This Srimad Bhagavatam describes she was like um, like somebody who has who has education, a good education, but they don't use it for the benefit of the people. So Devaki was within the prison of Kamsa. She was in Kamsa's palace in the prison, but no one could see her beauty. The, no one could see the, the, how the Lord was within her and how she was very beautiful because the Lord was within her. <laughs> But Kamsa, he saw his sister. Remember Devaki is Kamsa's sister. So Kamsa came and he, he has Devaki in his prison and he saw her, how she was so effulgent and she was so beautiful and he could, when he saw her, he could immediately understand, oh, the, that child, this eighth child who is going to be Krishna, he's taken his birth in her womb. Kamsa had never seen Devaki look so beautiful. So Kamsa understood that, oh, this is the child, this is this child who is, who is the personality of Godhead, this is Krishna, he's come now and he wants to kill me in the future. So Kamsa thought, what should I do? Maybe I should kill Devaki now. But Kamsa knew that if he killed Devaki, it's not going to save him because the demigods or the, the, all the people who serve Lord Vishnu, they're going to come again, they're going to find another way to fulfill the mission. Kamsa also knew, he thought, if I kill my sister while she's pregnant, everyone will talk and they will, they know I, it's very bad and I will, I will suffer at the time of death, I will get a very bad punishment. 
it will be very bad karma for me. Yeah, because she's a woman and she's under my care, so I will, I would, I will get a, a very bad reaction if I kill her. So like this, Kamsa was thinking what to do. So he decided, I won't kill Devaki right now. We'll just wait for the child to be born. Yeah, he was waiting for her to deliver this child and he thought as soon as she delivers the child then I will kill the child. So in this way Kamsa was always thinking about Krishna or Vishnu he was thinking about this child who's going to come from Devaki and he was always thinking about this child. He couldn't stop thinking about how this, this, this child is going to come to kill me. But although he's thinking of Krishna or Vishnu, you see, this is not really devotional service because he's thinking about Krishna as an enemy, not as a friend. So Kamsa was not Krishna. <coughs> a devotee always thinks of Krishna, but a devotee thinks in a good way about Krishna. A devotee doesn't think about killing Krishna. So, so at this time, then all the demigods, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, along with Narada and many other demigods, they all appeared secretly, invisibly. They all came into the house of Kamsa and they went to the prison. They went to see Devaki and they went to see the child in her womb to offer prayers. So the demigods are very pleased that Krishna is keeping his vow because Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, he makes a vow to whenever there's a decline in irreligion and a predominance of irreligiosity, at that time the Lord comes to give pleasure to the devotees and to kill the demons. So they saw Krishna was keeping his vow. And then they described 
because they're offering prayers. So they describe some of the wonderful qualities of Lord Krishna and they describe him as the supreme truth, the absolute truth. When people are interested in philosophy, they want to know what is the highest truth, what is the highest the absolute truth, and that is Krishna. There is relative truth and there is absolute truth. Relative truth is true today but not true tomorrow and it wasn't true yesterday. สัจธรรมอยู่สองประเภทนะคะเอ่อสัจธรรมประเภทที่หนึ่งเนี่ยเรียกว่าสัจธรรมชั่วขณะแล้วก็อีกอันหนึ่งก็คือสัจธรรม
Mm-hmm. Okay. So then the demigods there give a very long description. They offer very nice prayers to the Lord. They describe about the material world, how it all comes from Krishna. They say the material world is just like a tree and the tree stands on the ground. It's like a tree because the tree can also be cut. And so this material world is like that. It can be finished. The mater material world is not eternal, but Krishna's body is eternal. And the, the tree has two kinds of fruits. One fruit is happiness, the other fruit is distress. And living in the tree, there are two birds. One bird is the living entity and the other bird is the super soul. So we are trying to eat the fruit, the living entity, we are trying to eat the fruit, sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are suffering. And the other bird, the super soul, he is watching, he is just the witness, he sees everything we do, he reminds us, he remembers. So the whole, the demigods, they say that behind this whole material creation is the Supreme Lord. He's in charge of everything. And he, exp he expands himself, the Lord expands himself as Vishnu in the mode of goodness, Brahma in the mode of passion, and Shiva in charge of the mode of ignorance. So Lord Brahma, in the mode of passion, he does the work for creation. And Lord Vishnu, in the mode of goodness, he's maintaining the, the whole world. And when it comes time to annihilate, to destroy the whole creation, Lord Shiva does that. And they all they all act under the direction of the Supreme Lord. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, they're all under the direction of the Supreme Lord. So it's Krishna who is the original cause of everything. Krishna 
but the, the demigods, they say, it's very difficult for ordinary people to understand Krishna, that his form is not easy for ordinary people to understand. It's very pleasing for the devotees, but it's very dangerous for demons. The, devote, the devotees take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna and they cross over the ocean of material existence very easily. Yeah, the material ocean becomes very small, becomes like the water in the footprint of, of the hoofprint of a calf. So very easy for the devotee to cross over. But those, those who are not devotees, they don't take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. So they find it very difficult to cross over the ocean. Some people, the, the impersonalists, say, because they don't take shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, so even they go to the, they may come to the level of the impersonal Brahman, they come back again to the material world. Their intelligence is not yet purified. They don't take shelter of the feet, lotus feet of Krishna. So their intelligence, their minds, their, in, in, their intelligence is still contaminated. So, it, so even they get to Brahman, they fall back to the material world. But if one is a devotee, even if he may have difficulty, even if he may fall down, Krishna will help him, Krishna will save him. Yeah, but those who are not devotees, then Krishna doesn't worry about them, he doesn't care about them. Krishna takes care only for the devotees. So then the demigods go on to describe how the Lord appears in so many different incarnations, it takes many different forms and he comes into this world to, his main purpose is to give pleasure to his devotees. Yeah. And now he's, the demigods say, now we see you're coming in your original transcendental form. So the demigods are, they're, they know that the Lord has come simply for his own pleasure, 
he didn't need to come to kill the demons, but he came for his pleasure. He wants to give pleasure for his devotees. So people try to understand the form of God. Sometimes they read in the scriptures they, that God is the original person. So they say, oh, he must be very old. So they think God must be a very old man. But then they read another place in the scriptures and it said the Lord is eternally youthful. So then they have difficulty how to understand the Lord. And some people think, oh, God has no form. So Krishna has, is it the demigods are appreciating that now the Lord is coming personally to show his transcendental form to everyone. And, and seeing the Lord personally present before them, then everyone can understand the nature of his transcendental form. They can see what is the real form of God. And the, but the greatest mistake is to think that when God comes, that he comes with a material form. No, his form is always nothing to do with the material energy. It's a transcendental form, spiritual energy. So in this way the demigods tell Mother Devaki, you don't have to worry, you don't have to be afraid of Kamsa, the Lord is there in your womb and he will protect you. He's coming to save all, the, to, to please all the devotees, you have nothing to fear. Mm. This Lord comes, he is called by many different names, describing his transcendental qualities. He is known as Shamsunda because he's blackish and at the same time he's very, very beautiful. And he's called Girid Hari because he picks up the Govardhan hill. And he's called Nanda Nandana and Devaki Nandana because he's the son of Nanda Maharaj or the son of Devaki. Nanda Nandana 
เดวังกีนั่นแหละนะเพราะก็แปลว่าบุคคลก็แปลว่าบุตรชายของอคุณพ่อนั้นด่ากับคุณแม่เดวังกีแม่ so, so the devotees take pleasure in giving Krishna all different names according to his wonderful pastimes and qualities และสาวของพระองค์เนี่ยก็จะให้ชื่อพระองค์นะคะในแต่ละลีลาที่พระองค์แสดงเนี่ยก็จะเราก็จะเรียกคริสนาในนามที่ต่างกัน But the, those who are not devotees they think oh this is the Lord if if they think he doesn't have any name he should have no name names are material and they try to understand God with their limited material senses. If we want to understand Krishna, to understand God, we have to understand by devotional service. And when, when Krishna is pleased with our service, then he can reveal himself to us. So people who have a who have who have a good taste for service, they can understand Krishna's form. They can understand his qualities. สำหรับบุคคลเนี่ยที่มีรสชาติในการรับใช้คริสนานะคะสำหรับบุคคลนั้นเนี่ยเขาจะสามารถเข้าใจรูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์ได้สามารถเข้าใจพระนามของพระองค์ได้สามารถเข้าใจพระองค์ได้ But those who are not devotees and who don't like to do any service then they'll never understand Krishna แต่สำหรับบุคคลที่ไม่ใช่สาวกแล้วก็ไม่มีความสนใจในการปฏิบัติการวิจิตรเสียสารับใช้ต่อพระเจ้าเนี่ย Because Krishna covers himself by yoga maya. By yoga maya, they cannot understand Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, "Naham prakasha sarvatma yoga maya samavrita." Mudo yam na bijanati lokamam ajam avyayam. I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For them, I am covered by yoga maya. Just like when Krishna was at the battle of Kurukshetra, everyone saw him, but not everyone knew who he was. But even they didn't know who he was. If they died in his presence. Then they were transferred to the spiritual world. And the demigods also explain that the holy name of the Lord is not different from the Lord Himself. The, those who are not devotees, they cannot understand. In the material world, if we say water, 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 this no, is is different from the liquid. You need to drink water. You don't, you, that, then you can taste water, but you can't taste water just by the name, because because water is material. Right. 
เราก็จะไม่หายกระหายน้ำต่างกันต่างจากโลกผิว But the name Krishna is not different from Krishna the person. And when we call Krishna's name, then we attract Krishna the person. So when Krishna comes in this world, he performs many pastimes. And if we if we think and if we talk about and describe these pastimes and it, it, it talk about these pastimes, it's not different from the Lord Himself. And, and that's why the great sages they're always talking about Krishna and telling people about Krishna's activities. And they say, if if you're always speaking about Krishna and remembering Krishna's activities, then even though you're in the material body, you're liberated. So the devotees are all liberated souls. So the demigods, they, they say that we know that when you come on the earth, all the demons like Kamsa and others, they will all be finished. They won't be able to remain here so long as you are present. And the demigods speak about the auspicious marks on Krishna's lotus feet. There are marks like the thunderbolt, like a thunderbolt, because the thunderbolt is used to smash the mountain of ignorance which is in the heart. So if we take shelter of Lord Krishna's lotus, lotus feet, that thunderbolt on Krishna's lotus feet will remove the ignorance. And on Krishna's lotus feet, there's also a flag. The flag is a symbol of victory. It's a victory flag. So taking shelter of Krishna's lotus feet is victory. Another symbol on Krishna's lotus feet uh, is a trident, a trishu, right? You know that? Trishu, Lord Shiva, Durga, they carry a three-pronged fork. So that is it, represents the three modes of nature. They're also under the control of Krishna. One who has taken shelter of Krishna's lotus feet, he does not have to fear the three modes of nature. Uh, 
ระบาดของกฤษณะด้วยนั่นก็หมายความว่าถ้าเกิดว่าใครรับเอาพระบาทรูปตัวบวกของกฤษณะเป็นที่พึ่งเนี่ยก็ไม่ต้องกลัวสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุว่าจะทำลายเขา So in this way, the demigods are glorifying Lord Krishna, and they know everything about the mission of the Lord and the purpose of His appearance. And the Lord, and they know the Lord has come. Just to give pleasure to his devotees. Of course, there were different reasons, right? The demigods and Lord Mother Bhumi, they'd all gone to Brahma, and they were complaining that the planet was overburdened with all the Shatriya kings. So that was one reason why Krishna came, but that was not the main reason. His main reason to come. To give pleasure to his devotees. At the same time, the demigods they ask for, they say, "Please protect us. Help us to overcome all the obstacles on the path of our service to Krishna, to your lotus feet." So while Devaki was in the prison, sometimes the different demigods would all come along with their wives, and they'd come and visit Devaki, and they'd come to encourage her not to be afraid. She'd already seen her first six children all killed by Kamsa, and she thought this next child that he's also going to be killed. But the demigods and their wives would come there, and they would talk to Devaki, and they would tell her, "You don't have to worry. That this child in your womb is very special, and Kamsa is not going to be able to kill him." That this, this child is coming to protect you and they vote to protect Vasudev and Devaki. So in this way, they were pacifying her. So they would come regularly, and all the demigods, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they would come and talk to her and encourage her. Don't be afraid; everything will be okay. Okay, so we will stop and ask if there's any questions today. Okay, ค่ะก็จะยุดตรงนี้นะคะวันนี้ใครมีคำถามอะไรสามารถอันมิวแล้วก็ถามได้นะคะ Any questions, anybody? มีคำถามไหมคะ
しましょう。あれクリスマスか。あじゃなあプラダメか。ないか。อยากจะถามว่าเด็กลูกที่เคยอยู่ในคันของเดวากีก่อนหน้านี้ที่ถูกคำสาปสังหารนะคะมิเชลจำได้ว่าเหมือนมันมีเรื่องราวของเด็กๆเหล่านี้อยู่อะเมื่อชาติที่แล้วกูรูมหาราชพอจะเล่าให้ฟังได้ไหมคะได้ค่ะอ so m a d h v i p a v a n i m a t a j i she a s k question she want to know about the six Uh, child of Devaki, uh, who were there in their previous life? Why they being killed like that? Okay, so uh, these six children, they were actually the sons of Marichi. Marichi is a demigod, one of the sons of Brahma, and he represents the mind. So from the mind of Marichi, the de these six sons came. They were incarnations from the mind of Marichi, who is a dem demigod. m i k o n n e n c h i w a Marichi, ค่ะ Marichi เนี่ยเป็นลูกของ Brahma, เป็นลูกของ Brahma, นะคะแล้ว Marichi เนี่ยเปรียบเสมือนกับเป็นจิตใจของเราจากจิตใจของไม่ใช่ของเรานะจิตใจของ Marichi เนี่ยจะมีลูกออกมาหกคน So they committed an offence and they got cursed. So they they took birth in the womb of Devaki. To just to be killed by Kamsa. And the six these six sons they represent the six evils of the mind. Lust, anger, and greed. Illusion. Madness. And envy. So when these six these six sons are all killed, then all these six things they are removed from the womb of Devaki. Then it becomes very pure for the Lord to come there. Later on, as we go through the tenth canto, later on we will hear how, after Krishna kills Kamsa, then Devaki asks Krishna, "Please bring back your brothers who were all killed by Kamsa." Because Krishna had had gone, Krishna and Balaram, they had both gone to the Guru Kula of Sandipani Muni, and Sandi after they learned from Sandipani Muni. Then Sandipani Muni asked them to bring back his dead son. So they were able to find his dead son and bring him back to the guru. So when Devaki heard about this, then she asked Krishna that I heard you brought your guru's son back. So can you bring back your six brothers? 
หลือเสด็จนี้พอเดวกีได้ยินเรื่องราวนี้ใช่ไหมคะเดวกีก็เลยบอกคริสนาว่าฉันได้ยินเรื่องราวนี้มาว่าเธอสามารถให้พาลูกของกูดูเธอที่ตายไปแล้วเนี่ยฟื้นคืนชีพมาได้เพราะฉะนั้นเธอสามารถเอาพี่พี่เธอหกคนเนี่ยฟื้นคืนชีพมาได้ไหม So Krishna went and he found them and he brought them back. And then the, when Devaki saw her six sons, you know, she was very happy and the milk flowed in her breast and she fed her breast milk to the six sons. So Krishna had already drank the milk from Devaki's breast because, you know, when he was when he appeared as a child, she fed some breast milk to Krishna, so that the milk which these six sons got that was Krishna's prasada. <laughs> So after they drank the breast milk of Devaki, then they all went back to the heavenly planets because they were from there. They were demigods. Okay, any other question? Madhavi Papani? Is it? Okay, Meta. Okay, fine. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Any other question? Yes, Hare Krishna. I have one question, Maharaji. Uh huh. So, when we chant the holy name, they explain there's a few types of holy name you can chant without uh, from your mind, or sometimes you just uh, move your lips, or sometimes you chant loudly. So, which one is the most highest, the greatest chanting among them? Yes. <laughs> เขาบอกกันว่าการสวดมนต์นะคะสามารถทําได้หลายอย่างอาจจะสวดออกมาโดยการเปล่งเสียงหรือว่าอาจสวดจากจิตใจหรือว่าอาจจะสวดแบบเงียบเงียบขยับนิดอย่างเดียวการสวดประเภทไหนถือว่าเป็นการสวดมนต์ที่ดีที่สุดและประเสริฐ Loud chanting is the best อาจารย์มาแล้วก็ตอบว่าการสวดมนต์ดังแบบดังๆนะคะเป็นการสวดมนต์ที่ดีที่สุด The louder we chant, more powerful it becomes In the Chaitanya Bhagwat, there's discussion because they complain. Some Brahmanas were complaining about Hari Das Thakur because he chanted so loudly. They said, "Now is Chaturmasya. Now the Lord is sleeping. At the time of Chaturmasya, the Lord takes rest. Your loud chanting will wake him up." And they said that when you wake him up, he'll be angry. And when he gets angry, then he won't. We won't get good rain. We won't get a good harvest. And then the price of rice will go up. It will be your fault. Mm -hmm. 
ทําให้เราไม่สามารถปลูกข้าวปลูกยาได้แล้วก็ทําให้ราคาของข้าวเนี่ยมันก็จะแพงขึ้น So Haridas Thakur said, "Yeah, he said, you know, he said, if I chant the holy name in my mind, it's good for me." But when I chant loudly, then everybody who hears the holy name, they all benefit. So Haridas Thakur said, "What's better, one who can maintain himself, or one who can maintain a hundred people?" If one can maintain a hundred people, that is better than just maintaining only yourself, obviously. And there is a verse also in the scriptures to support this. It's in the tenth canto, in relation to the liberation of Vidya Dara. Vidya Dara. What happened was one time Nanda Maharaj was camping at the side of the Yamuna. And then a big snake came out during the night, and it came out and it began to swallow Nanda Maharaj. So Nanda Maharaj called out to Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna immediately came and touched the snake with his left foot. And immediately, that snake changed into a demigod, Vidya Dara. And so the, this demigod then offered prayers to Lord Krishna. And he, the demigod explained. He said, "I had been cursed. I was cursed to become a snake, but by the touch of your foot, you have delivered me." And he also he said the loud chanting of the holy name delivers all who hear the holy name. But I have been more fortunate because I was touched by your lotus foot. And then also, the, you see in Hari Nam Chintamani, there's a conversation between Lord Chaitanya and Hari Das. Uh, Lord Chaitanya asks Hari Das Thakur, how to deliver? All the living entities. Yeah. No, Lord Chaitanya asks Hari Das. Yeah. 
Lord Chaitanya said, there are so many very fallen living entities, there are souls in the trees, in the plants, in the insects. How can they all be delivered? And so Haridas Thakur said, the loud chanting of the holy name can deliver all living entities. Mm. So just to just to stay there in Samoy, you want to do loud chanting because there's so many living entities there to be delivered. There was one devotee staying in Hong Kong. He didn't want, he, he wanted to leave. He said, nothing, nobody's interested here. He said, I can't do anything. He said, I, I just want to pack up and go. But Prabhupada said, no, don't go. He said, just stay there and chant Hare Krishna. It will be very good for the people there. Not only for the people, for all living entities. So these living entities, they cannot do much devotional service, they cannot read the books, they cannot understand philosophy, but they can hear the holy name. And it's the greatest welfare work to give the holy name. But if you just chant in your mind, that's not going to benefit them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's an important point. Okay, any other questions? If there are no questions, then we'll stop here tonight. Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much, Archana. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Thank all the devotees for listening, for their participation. Have a good weekend. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Take คุณทุกคนนะคะที่มาร่วมขอโทษด้วยนะคะถ้าเกิดแปลตกแปลผิดไปชอบดีชอบดีค่ะขอบคุณค่ะเดี๋ยวอัญชนะเดี๋ยว